Uh, hey, folks. Uh, Ryan Davis and, and Brad Shoemaker here, Hello. and we are joined by Eck and John from Uber Games, uh, who are here to show off Super Monday Night Combat. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you guys for coming all the way down from Seattle. I, I feel like making a little special trip to give us a, a deep dive into this game. We haven't seen uh, much. Like I, I've been in the beta for a little bit. Brad, you've been in the beta for a little bit. Yep. I, I've messed around with the game some, but you guys haven't really released uh, that much public uh, uh, direct footage of, of this game. So... Uh, yeah, this will be the first time that uh, the public sees the game, actually. And you make us feel so special. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Ek, 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 do you want to just uh, kind of give us a little rundown here at this... this Because this, this is kind of what you first see when you load up the game in its current state. Right, right. So the first, this is the pretty much the, what we call the agent dashboard. What we call you is an agent in the game, So because you have a, a stable of different pros that you can own over time. So uh, the first thing you see is you have a new section. Like We've been updating every week for the last 13 weeks. So that, that agent persona, that uh -huh. is separate from any pros that you might play right, as in right. an actual game. Okay. Right. That's that's you as the player that and you, you can own the different pros as you go. Or, you know, in this case, every week we have free pro rotation, so you can play with the available uh, pros because Oh that's right, you guys are going you guys are going free to play right. for this. So this is a free to play title and it's in uh, what we call imitational mode right now. Which pretty much means we, we don't call it a beta anymore because we're we're charging people for real money, but um, also means we're not gonna wipe stats. Yeah, so anything you buy, anything you do, any any games you play, you'll be able to, all the stats will be saved, you won't ever lose strings, anything. The strings, the yeah. hoodie strings, the hoodie strings. Oh, hoodie strings. Yep. Good. There so, we go. There we go. Got okay. wardrobe Sorry. malfunction. Well, wardrobe <laughs> malfunction back here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so you guys are still very much in active development. Yeah. Right. Kind of on a weekly basis, right? Yeah, we do, uh, we dev pretty much Monday yeah. through Wednesday, do a patch on Thursday, and if we don't fuck up... <laughs> Maybe one on Friday if we do. That's and a big not. <laughs> we do, it's been twice. We do get a lot of people asking us, oh, what are you going to be done? And then we have to say, well, we're actually never going to be done because we're always going to be adding to it new game modes, new pros, new everything. You know, it kind of seems like that's just game development now. Yeah. Um, it, it, it has gone from being the, like, I make a thing and I put it out there and then I go do another thing yeah, to, like the, to the, this uh, much more of a service model. Like the old, the old fire and forget model of, of making a game and throwing it out there seems kind of done. It's been really hectic and fun for us just to get so much, you know, immediate feedback on things you just do a week before and and then, you know, some people like it, some people hate it, we change it. Tell me about this giant monkey. Oh, Go back no. to the giant monkey and tell me about the giant monkey. That is a classy yes. gorilla. Classy gorilla in a gangster suit and a monocle. I yeah. Think, I think he needs a fedora. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a variation with a fedora. How much oh, do great. I have to pay for the fedora? <laughs> How much do you want to pay for the fedora? <laughs> now how much would you pay? What kind of fedora? See, this is how, this is how you hook us in, man. This is how it works. Hours. Now it's seasonally appropriate. Yeah, I like seasonally it. appropriate. I like Most it. Most of the pros this week have that. Excellent, excellent. So this is, this so is a show, lot of what we'll be doing week from week is adding new pros and adding new costumes and stuff. So Cheston here has three different costumes right now, or so, uniforms. So so these uh, these 12 characters that we see right here. Uh, Actually, there's 13. Oh, there's one there, more hidden. Hidden guy. Oh, wow. Secret so character? Oh, nice. Of course. <laughs> Uh, so this is not the uh, final roster for the game, then? You're going to have more, more characters rolling out over time? Correct. Yeah, we're always okay. going to be adding more. Yeah. Okay. There's five roles. You to see the, the six icons on the side. The first one's all, and then there's different roles. Okay, so uh -huh. these, these guys fall into different yeah, kind of exactly. specialties. So these guys are the commandos. They're your uh, kind of stealthy slash uh, lots of fast movement and lots of debuff abilities. You have your strikers, which are more straight-up shooter, high mobility, and kind of jack-of-all-trades type characters. Oh, Ryan's pointing at the Lucha Deer. Ryan seems to have noticed something. I noticed that you should go back to that last character that you had, the last pro you had that. selected there. Oh, we did this yeah. for you guys. Oh, that's awesome. That's, <laughs> that's pretty impressive That's pretty stuff. swell. Awesome. So we awesome. want to figure out a way to give this out to giant bomb folk at some point. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, clearly, we'll have to. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh... I want to see you guys shoot some stuff. I want to see you guys shoot some stuff, and I also right. want to just like start digging into kind of what differentiates this from non-super boring Monday Night Combat. <laughs> Ugh, the vanilla. Ugh, I just so just uh, why do, why would I care? I've got this super Monday Night Combat now, uh, but you know, the free to play that's a pretty big jump for the for the kind of the model for you guys and going into something that's a little more service oriented. Uh, I'm uh, curious to have you guys kind of explain as as we're seeing the action here what that does to the fundamental. Uh, kind of feel of the gameplay, uh, and uh, and and how that kind of affects strategy, and how that has affected the development of just things like the you know the maps and the the balance and such. So, 
Well, I'll go ahead and play the, the Lucha Deer. And awesome. The first thing you'll notice is that we actually pick our characters before the game right. starts. So you can see that everybody's picking different characters and you can't change in game. So it's much more of the Dota style genre where you pick a game, you pick your characters, you get in and you play that round with those characters. And when you're done, you get to try something different. So yeah. you, you mentioned Dota, like do you guys have the real crazy, you know, like random and all pick and, and all those filtering options for the, the selection process here? Not yet, but okay. we do plan on having different modes once we get a big enough player base. Um, to do things like draft mode and locking out. More competitive features like that, yeah. Cool. So this is one of the interesting things we're doing is we're actually in this early stage is we're releasing unfinished maps. Just, wow. Just so the players can get in and play them and we can tweak the map before we put a final co like coat of paint on them. But if nothing else, like this is, this seems very representative at least of the, uh, well first we had to get our upgrade on. So, like Monday Night Combat, you up, you upgrade your skills as you play, but we now have five of them, and they upgrade to four levels. And instead of spending money on them, you level up as you earn money in game. So, um, you go up to level 15. If you look down here, down in the right corner there, you'll see I'm level one. I'm actually up there at level one. These are my stats and what the, what they'll be at level two. And every time I level up, I can increase my skills. And that goes up to level 15 in a in a 20 in an average of 20 minute game. Right. Yeah, not not to not to put too fine a point on it, but you guys are hewing pretty close to like the Dota or MOBA model, right? With you know creep waves, right. like kind of per match uh, character leveling, um, and know, it, real real team based stuff. Like th yeah. this is a pretty familiar framework, right, for, right. for that kind of multiplayer game. But but what you're actually doing is so different, right? But the the action the action is obviously what what really differentiates it. Right. We, we, Monday Night Combat was sort of a, a MOBA game, yeah, but it was yeah. much more shooter than MOBA. Right, We've driven right. it a bit more in the MOBA direction. Okay. Are you guys okay with saying MOBA? Yeah. Uh, like Mo 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 Action RTS. Yeah, okay. Like, okay. That's what Valve's I calling it. I still don't yeah. think that's been standardized yet. <laughs> I'm trying to standardize it. That's all. All right. <laughs> Nobody, I, just, I want people to say MOBA because it's crazy. A, <laughs> I'm not a fan because it stands for Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. Which no, could what it stands be for is retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's nonsense. It yeah, we, we don't like. We called ourselves a Dota-inspired shooter, but we don't. We don't know what the genre is going to be. It's no. just This is. Everyone's still figuring out. Yeah. You know, I, we're still. I, I think. Uh, and I really don't mean this in a derisive way, but we're still in that, that period where, you know, everything's called a Doom clone because right. we haven't right. figured out exactly. Exactly. what really defines the genre yet. It's like, oh, you just made a Doom clone. It's like, well, yes, it's played from this perspective and it has these mechanics, but yeah. it turns out you can make very different experiences. And, so, we're, and we're completely throwing people off with the shooter sort of controls and perspective, too, with it on top of it. So. Oh, what I was going to say earlier, though, is when there, there was the kind of the, the map uh, overview there at the start of the match... Uh, one of the things that was that seemed really hinted at in, in your debut trailer back at uh, back at PAX was the uh, the idea of couching these levels in more naturalistic environments, mm -hmm. uh, which we're seeing here with kind of the, the red rocks. What was the what was the design decision behind that uh, for the for the maps? Um, to make the characters really stand out a little more than from the background, but also to give it a, a bigger bigger than just a sports uh, arena atmosphere to make it a little more interesting. Yeah, how has the Monday Night Combat fiction evolved? Like, what's, uh, what's going on here? In who's the, in the writing? Of... Who's writing your novel? I guess is the first question. <laughs> which which one? <laughs> well, the, the, well, the graphic novel oh, first, because right, right, you know right. you gotta sure. you gotta have that as the pre order bonus. Right, and then the Penny Arcade comic. <laughs> right, and then... right. You, know, yeah. you Penny Arcade yeah. to do a, a thing for and then, four uh, weeks or whatever. God, right. how much does that have to cost? I can't even imagine. <laughs> These guys are made of money. Then the Ridley Scott short movie after that. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. Yeah, the, the anime DVD, <laughs> direct to DVD. Yeah, the, yeah, the direct to DVD anime, of course. But it's made in America, it just looks like anime. So we're we're not deep into this match, and you're almost level four already. Obviously, the the character progression happens pretty rapidly. Nice save there. Thank you. I think uh, I think the wow. I think they're being nice to John because of the <laughs> yeah. camo. That's what, that's why he's leveling so fast. Yeah, they so usually beat up on me. <laughs> But, uh, so one of the key things about the game is you don't tend to want to die, so there's actually the more mobile element of, I'm going to go back to my base and heal before I stick, okay, out, yeah. stick my nose out there some Yeah, more. Like, like you mentioned that the first game was very much a shooter, and you did die frequently, mm -hmm. or at least I did. I, but, uh, I, we did too. I um, never died. I actually played perfect every single game. <laughs> you're like, you're like, like 2,500 and 0, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so, we didn't win every match. He just never died. Right. Yeah, I mean, he was I had cowering my in the corner, I had my shaking. Dead cheap command. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, but I, I bring that up because uh, in in the hardcore mobas like Dota, like there is the concept of feeding. Oh. You know, there's the there's the idea that the more you die, the stronger it's making the other team. 
Yes. Uh, so, that, so that's that's totally in play here. Because right? of that, if you can look real quick, I'm about to respawn. But during our death scene, we're actually showing off like the things that hurt you, what percentage it did, and then we actually cater our tool tips depending on what what killed you, saying ways, telling you ways to avoid it, things like that. So and we're level trying three, to help yeah. that a bit. At level three, he's respawning pretty quickly, but as you progress and level up, the spawn timers get longer too. So it's a disadvantage to die for your team. Uh, John, uh, let's let's break down uh, this class at least before we start talking about uh, some of the other ones. Sure, I'm playing the veteran, which is one of our new characters, and got the awesome leech of deer skin. Yeah. So his weapons are he's got these flying falcons that he they're like. I was gonna say, tell me about your laser eagles. <laughs> they, they fly for it. They actually track things at the end. So if I fire up here, you'll see them. Oh yeah, they drift a little. I see that. If sure. you see them, they'll actually turn at enemies. If I can. You can aim. Yeah. <laughs> If I can aim. Well, you have to aim like close to them. Yeah, Come yeah. on, it's not. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it. It's it's hooking around that corner yeah. pretty hard. So and he's more of a close range character. So his second second weapon is a uh, a stool with lots of spikes on it. Oh, okay. I was wondering what that was. Yeah. I thought maybe it was like a landmine. Who is designing your weapons? <laughs> where, where is this coming from? So his abilities are this charge with the grapple on it, except for he was in the air. Another one is uh, a throw grapple. So. Let me see if I can get this close to somebody. There we go. Uh, if I don't die. Hold on, let me get some heal up here for a second. Spend a little bit of money. Then I also got this claw that I can grapple, grab people and bring them to me. Great. Yes. Oh, God. No, nope, spam bomb. Aw. Uh, sponsor bomb. Sponsor bomb, yep. That's by the tank there. So one of the things we're really happy with is the Annihilator works pretty much the same like it did MNC, but... Because the pushes uh, are a bit more concentrated, because we really changed how the wave, uh, the bots are spawned, uh, it makes it so that there's huge battles over the Annihilator. Annihilator is a thing in the middle of the map that uh, has a timer every five minutes. You can, each team can decide to set it off, and it kills all the bots right on the map, and, oh. and, and hurts the other pros too. Well, oh, hot zone over there. Yeah. Yeah, this game really comes down to a lot, a lot like the MOBA games, where if you're going one v three, you probably won't survive. Right, and that's what that was. Right. Yeah, there it seems seems like there's a lot more focus on on coordination. Mm -hmm. Like you can't really lone wolf it because you could you could be relatively effective by yourself in the first game. Right. To a point, at least. Yeah. yeah. So this we do have these areas up here where these neutral bots spawn. So this is very similar, kind of our take on a jungle from okay. a normal mobile game. jungling up here. Yeah, mm -hmm. so anybody can kill, kill these these bots up here. And they do a lot of damage to you, so too. Do you have, like, a Roshan equivalent up here somewhere? Or? Well, we still have, like, Chicky spawn, Chicky Canter spawns, yeah. and the mascot spawns. Chicky Canter is a giant chicken that you can ride onto. And you, once you get its golden egg, you get a power boost. I, I like how I like how casual you guys are about all of the <laughs> fucking insane shit in your game. <laughs> no, yeah, we, sponsor bomb. <laughs> yeah, it's giant chicken you ride around on. I don't know. Yeah, you know. You annihilators, got, you, giant weapon in the middle of the base. You got Cheston, the big monkey that rampages around. <laughs> he throws a barrel. Yeah, it's you guys, awesome. like you guys are so bored with the crazy. Like you've, you've been around oh, the crazy. There's, there's things one for of too his banana. See that banana? Oh, Jesus. oh, it's, it's my team, or else I'd trip over it. Yeah. You do trip on it's bananas. It's a little stun, stun banana. <clears throat> So you guys are, I mean, this is, you are establishing kind of your starting tone for for these characters and these classes here, and, and I imagine kind of, as, as seems to be kind of the free-to-play model, you're going to be introducing uh, more of these characters. I can only, can only imagine how much crazier <laughs> these are going to get if this is your baseline. Right, 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 right. We have some, we're, we have, there's three more we're working on right now. Some, some crazy ideas. Very just, good. Just nice ring that guy out. Just ring him out. That's why I was so impressed earlier where he got kicked out and yeah. he was able to recover right. and jet back to a surface. That was... Because in my brief time with the game, where, where I had really no idea what the fuck was going on, <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just knew, like, okay, stick close to, like, I'll play the, I'll play the gunner because he has a giant gun and that seems like a pretty self-explanatory class to play as. Right. Oh, uh, figured out the skill system pretty quickly. Cool. Um, yeah, the, the thing that... If and then just, and then just stick close to my teammates. Yeah. That's and that's that. you you yeah. doing everything right. If you've played M and C before, the the strong, hardest thing to come across is the the lower lethality, which some people really like. In that there's no oh I turned around the corner and got headshot and died. That that's gone. But it's much more teamwork based. So it, it takes a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I guess, I guess the, the flip side of that is that you also can't just run around killing people like crazy. 
Right. It's not as twitchy yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in that regard. You're right about Although that. Although, once you, once everybody gets up around level 15, you do die quite a bit faster. So but, there, there but is I'll say some of that. It's nice that it, it has that a little bit of that churn, a little bit of that buildup of like, mm -hmm. okay, you're going to start the, the level off. Everyone's, you know, encounter is going to take a little longer to, to kind of play out. You know, as the teams feel each other out and, you know, you get your, your defenses up and what have you. What kind of, uh, what kind of like, a tactical view do you have? Is there any kind of overhead way to sort of take in if everything hit, that's going on? I can hit left alt and get... Okay. This map needs a little bit better view there. But. And you've got just kind of the basic, you know, yeah. push, so and, there, push okay, and pull. Yeah, you, can see our, you can see our money ball. The money ball's on the other side and it kind of gives you an idea of where the bots are and where okay. the lanes are. Okay. So. But you know, I guess you don't, you don't want to show people absolutely everything. Right, and right. we also, if you look at the top of the screen, you can see uh, the health and the situation of all, all everybody on each team and right. where the bots are and the hotshots and uh, Iceman logos with the shield next to it showing the status of the Moneyball shields and where the bots are. And we also have a feature called Team Vision where if you can, you'll notice some characters through walls. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. That's If your teammates can see them, you can see them. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of our version okay, I was of Fog of War. I, I was wondering what was, what was dictating that. Yeah, it's kind of our version of Fog of War. It's kind of reverse Fog of War, but it, it accomplishes kind of the same. So this is this uh, the veteran here seems. Uh, good lord, uh, seems very seems viable. Like a, seems as like a, an asshole. It seems like an asshole, which I'm way into. Slamming <laughs> people's face into the but, ground. But also, uh, you know, uh, real viable melee class. Uh, right. How often do you encounter that in, in Super Monday Night Combat? He, him, and the commandos are really. The only true like melee classes. Okay. What's up with the assassins? Like, uh, some people had some issues with the one-hit stealth kills in the first game. Right. right. Uh, has that stuff been toned down? Uh, are they less Quite annoying? <laughs> the only one-hit kills there are in the game anymore is ring outs. Okay. So, that doesn't make the assassin less viable, but it does change her role a bit. Right. She's she's no longer a one-hit kill assassin. She's more of a a harasser and a saboteur. Okay. You know? Somebody who goes in jungles early and then comes down and finishes people off. Man, when, when we're, going, we're going straight down the mobile <laughs> hole here. <laughs> I'm not going to go jungle early. So would you say the veteran is, is more of a carry or a support? Uh, well, <laughs> he's more of a tank, actually. Yeah, okay. All the enforcer class, the big guys are more and more tanks, tank roles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ouch. See, even though we lowered lethality, you can see how fast I just died there because yeah. it was four on one. I'm noticing a lot of blue at the top. On <laughs> yeah, they're, bars. they're kind of whipping your ass, John. Yeah, uh, I don't. Oh, yeah, I, no. I never be. I never claim to be good at my game. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, the blue bots are pretty much close to good at making it, but base. not necessarily at play. We have a little meme of, uh, among some of the uh, the really hardcore fans we have right now, and it's like when you're playing bad, all you need to do is just get good. <laughs> just just die less. And I haven't yeah. quite figured out how to get good, get good yet. I, I would recommend dying less and also shooting that guy. <laughs> yeah. A friend of the site, Gary Witta, uh, his, he, he loves to give uh, real salient game advice, uh, such as shoot that guy and get him. So Don't miss. Yeah. That, yeah. That, same, that same school of thought. Let's see if I can hook one of these guys here, bring them all in. Oh, just missed. Uh, so, so as of now, you guys are PC only on this one. Right. Uh, you right started now out. The first, first game started out on the Xbox. True. Uh, but uh, has, has it been has it been liberating not being beholden to that kind of old piece of hardware? Like you guys are, are able to kind of cut loose a little bit more. Uh, not yeah. On the PC only. In some ways, you know, we can raise the spec, but we don't. As a free to play game, we don't want to raise it too much. Right. So we are cognizant of that. I, I mean, it looks good, but it definitely yeah. uh, you could tell uh, the art style is what is. What is foremost here? Right. Yes, yeah. you want it to scale. And the one of the right. things that being on PC really brings to us is how quickly we can send out updates. Right. Which, Which has is, been weekly. So far. Oh, sure. Like the no approval process. It's just your approval process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So John says, "Yeah, it's good." And with Steam, Steam's been wonderful, and we have this great ability to. We've done a couple of Thursday patches that went, "Oh, we actually screwed something up," and we're able to patch literally like the next day. And no problem. And I noticed, I, I don't know if this will carry over into the final game, but all of my Steam friends stuff uh, persisted in-game. Right. right. Uh, There's a Steam friends list. So, yeah. so it was like if anyone else was playing Super Mario Combat, uh, I could see them in-game and, uh, and invite them and Yeah, whatnot. you can right-click on their name pretty much in the chat room and, and invite the game. Another thing I want to mention about leveling, There's a, next to each, well, can't see it right now, but next to each player's <laughs> name, there's a number there. And the color of that level kind of determines how strong they are. So if, there's, if they're a couple levels ahead of you, they'll be red. And yeah. if they're the same level, it'll be a different color. And so, so here on the scoreboard, you can see, like, 
kills deaths to save spots, and then what level they are. So you can, and what level directly correlates to how strong you are. So there is the whole MOBA esque strategy of do well early to improve your late game and be a little bit better. But if you die too many times, we have catch up mechanisms that if you start off poorly, but then get a few really key kills, you can actually catch back up and. All right. So, other than John and and other than the the uh, the jokey get better, uh, any any low level pro tips for a, a starting Super Mundanite combat player? Try not to die. Um, it's it's perfectly fine to go back and heal up instead of just dying. You're saying like like playing conservatively, right? Play yeah. a little conservatively, but learning when to dive and when to go after somebody who's overextending. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of strategy there. Uh, work with your teammates. Kill bots. So, uh, so, so I guess that's my question, is the balance, and, and it's kind of like it's it's the MOBA thing, right? Is Yeah, you never want to fall behind in your levels. Well, you, know, we have, you also don't want to... Well, there is that balance of yeah. how much do you want to fight the guys and how much do you want to control yeah, it's a very delicate balance. The, the bots. Uh, right. How, how important is, uh, you know, sticking to your lane and not feeding the other team? I mean... Like you mentioned, there are some ways to come back if you if you fall behind a little bit. But like, is it is it is it like at some point you're just going to have to give up the match because you weren't able to lane as as well as they did? We we do have matches that you can't. You, other teams have obviously outperformed you, and uh, you know it, it's kind of it ends up being a roll. But the nice thing about the, uh, SMNC is an average game's 20 minutes long, so you're not. You know, you know, most MOBAs run 45 minutes to an hour. Right, right. So even if it's a roll, the game will be over soon anyway. Okay. If it's a real roll, it'll end in like 15 minutes. So that's that's like the surrender time of most other MOBAs. I'm uh, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that the front line is continually being pushed back here. <laughs> yeah, we, we've all kind of dropped back and defended this side. Actually, 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 actually go to the other side and uh, try to push our lane over there. We're having issues. They're playing. They're playing pretty well as a team. They're playing really well as yeah. a team. But I'm going to go ahead and ring out Uber Gaff here. Oh, uh, any, anything uh, built in room. in place for uh, communication uh, with your team, or uh, leave people to their own devices on that stuff? So there's a couple things. There's quick chat messages. Okay. Where, you know, if you, there's go go after the annihilator or push left lane, push right lane. There's some um, in-game VO too, but we're still working on that. Okay. Um, and, and then since you're integrated into Steam, I assume all the all the voice chat stuff there. Right. There's uh, some of that, and is, then is some of our players like to play on a on like mumble servers and right. things like that. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So here's like quick chat, and I could say. You know, oh, okay, just just one through yeah. zero. I need healing. A little exclamation point pops up above my head. And everyone's all shut up, John. <laughs> you got always our, need healing. We, we've got our <laughs> own problems right need now. Healing? Get good. Shut up and stick to your lane. Oh Let's... no! Oh man! Oh, that's, that's oh. Another, uh, there was no saving that. That's another new, new commando called Spark, and he has the ability to teleport and. Has a back grapple, which you saw is bringing yeah. down at. So how how different are the uh, individual characters within a category? Like, are they, they? I mean, obviously they're kind of filling the same role on the team. They fill the same role on the team, but they all have their own unique skills, and they all play different. So if you like one commando, say you really like playing assassin, and you're want to try something different, you might like Spark or Wascott because they're also commandos. Well, they do play very differently. Oh. Even with the same role. This guy's yeah. shooting your money ball. Don't know. We're about to lose it here. Uh oh. Yeah. This is not going. This is. Oh. That's one of Spark's abilities right there is make your screen go. Your screen's going all kind of right now. <laughs> and now you're dead. Now yeah, you're I dead. got flashed by the Spark and then product <laughs> grenaded by the, by the tank. tank. Yeah. Well, now it seems like they're just showing off. Yeah. Yeah, did, did you tell them that uh, this was the match? For all the marbles, I told them to go easy on me. But they're not. It's too competitive. You know, that's what you get with a competitive game too. People get to, especially in the office, like we get a little competitive yeah. ourselves. Actually, yeah. I mean, are there uh, are there any kind of community or social tools in here for dealing with dicks? Like some people can tend to be a little contentious uh, when they play games like this. Not yet, but we're very okay. aware that we're going to need something along the that, lines. Part of that's matchmaking against. Yeah. Have no, you guys dicks. have you guys kind of uh, solidified your, your plans for the like what the the rest of the beta rollout or the you know your your limited access uh, period is going to look like coming up to the official launch? We uh, we have we have a general plan, but we're also kind of taking it week by week. Okay. And you know see what the community wants and what features we want to get in as well. And we're also experimenting with different types of features. Uh, at the same time, though, I mean, you mentioned that you are accepting 
real U.S. dollars from people now. So yes. I mean, you, you kind of, you, I guess you kind of have soft launched in a sense. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's why we're in invitational mode now, yeah. instead of beta. Yeah. But we still feel like there's a bunch of features we want to add before we open it up to everybody. Right. A part of uh, accepting real money is also test that out. Is you know, how are our prices? Are we, you know. Are we even close and things like that? Just, just sort of testing that out. Oh, because no one really knows, right? Exactly. Like we're still, I feel like, at alongside, kind of parallel with the 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 MOBA scene is the is the free to play thing. Oh, and we're straddling a shooter to a you know an action RTS MOBA, whatever, what have you. So yeah. this is just there's no standards. It's right. like there's no accepted like yes, this is how much things cost. So we have to experiment. And that's part of the fun too. I can imagine. So what's the persistence after this? Obviously, all that leveling is, is you know, for the pro and for the match. So uh, at the end of a game, you level up. You have a, an agent level. Okay. And you are the agent. So you're an agent that has... You're a, the agent. You are an agent. And just <laughs> like a sports agents. agent, you have pros that you're working with and can hire. So this the level here is uh, your overall level. Uh, you can go up to 99, where every four levels you unlock an endorsement slot. And then every time you play, you got combat credits, which is kind of uh, in-game money you earn that you can buy pros with and endorsements with and and products with and I'll show you all I imagine it. I can also buy with real money combat credits. Hello. Oh, oh. oh hold That's on a second. New. Hold on a second here folks. Give us a second. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> oh, oh. Still in beta. Invitational, please. Man, now they're That's seeing new. our desktop. That Shh. doesn't do that on my machine. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll submit a ticket, I guess. So, well, while while we're getting back into the game, what is uh, what's your philosophy on like selling stuff versus letting you unlock stuff? Like, is there is there anything in the game that you can only access by paying real money, or can you kind of grind your way to everything eventually? Or how the does only that thing that you can't get uh, without playing the game is is the unique skins. So you can play all the pros by unlocking with uh, with combat credits, and uh, you can. All the custom class stuff is you can do from at any point. Um, this these endorsement system, which, uh, as you saw when I when I leveled up, I got uh, well. The overall level is uh, every four you open up a new endorsement slot, and all endorsements are as ways to increase your stats. So like I'm looking at skill recovery here. So each each one of these, there's five different levels of the of them. The first level just gives you a little bit of skill regen, and you can stack them on top of each other. So okay. You, Stick them all in here, and you get 25 times the 0.75% skill regen. So, and then as you move up, you get side effects of like here's better skill regen, but a little less health regen. And then when you get up to the fourth level, you start getting skill regen and weapon accuracy. So, you so you can min max to a point, but there's seems like there are definite trade offs to, to any uh, particular yeah, path. Yeah, it, it's a whole system of you've leveled up, you now get to get a little bit more powerful, but now you get to spend all this min maxing time saying. How does how does which which endorsements do I put together to help me play the best way I like to play? Tell me a little bit about Aptalube. <laughs> <laughs> well, it uh, makes your skills come back faster. It makes you better. Does it tingle when I apply it? <laughs> Depending it... on if you have the bacon endorsement version or the <laughs> regular. Is it bad if I drink it? No, you can't no. drink it. Okay, drink drink liberally. Might have different side effects then. Yes. <laughs> good good to like, know. You may not heal as fast. There we go. What's a can can we do one more of these? Yeah, sure. You guys up for another? Brad, you up for another? Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, I would like to see another another map if that's at yeah, all possible. Uh, I'm curious about that element here because that's that. It seems like it's kind of one of those. You know, there's. It's you know Monday Night Combat and Super Monday Night Combat by by virtue of the connection is pretty unique despite certain trappings that it it shares with the you know the the MOBA framework but I feel like that having multiple maps and that differentiation is is kind of one of the big things that yeah. that mm -hmm. splits right uh, so I'm I'm curious just to see kind of what the philosophy is like and because it, it you know you saw it in, in in Monday Night Combat and you see it here as well where there's uh, a lot of layering vertically of the levels, giving you lots of multiple paths and and uh, uh, kind of ways to, to duck in and around. Yeah, so. let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see your, like, your most polished map, since you mentioned okay. that some of them you guys are rolling out before they're kind of fully ready. We have two, uh, we have two maps released right now. Uh, the, the, uh, the one we just saw is a map called Gun, Gun Mountain, uh, which is our newer map. The other one is Locomoco Arena, which is quite a bit farther along art-wise. So it's on random rotation, so hopefully we'll uh, <laughs> get All it. All right, we'll cross our I just, fingers. I just need to get, there we go. All right. So what, you're, what John's doing right now is a practice game where you can pretty much invite not any, any of your friends or your enemies, and then 
mix and match the teams together and, and play. So. It's a great loading screen. <laughs> and typically, there's you can just go into play, hit quick match, and you'll be put into a queue and, and matched up with other people. Are you still gaining uh, agent level on... Um so even, even these practice matches, or, or is this like a kind of a scrimmage yes. thing where you, you don't... You get, a little, you get a little bit for playing practice matches, just so, you, you know, we don't, we don't want people grinding it out, basically, in practice matches by themselves. We don't actually play with other players. Which so there was, these there was a, you have. <laughs> there was a bug last week where people so, were grinding all weekend. Who do you guys want to see me play? The combat credits. Uh, let's go the other direction. We saw the kind of the big melee guy. Let's let's see something a little faster, a little more range based. Spark, Spark or West God maybe. Let's uh, let's go with Spark. I'm pretty good at Spark. He Would says, you like me to use the uh, holiday yeah, uniform? Yeah, his, his his bad holiday sweater is amazing. <laughs> Way into that. Let's see, and I'll use uh, skill redu recovery endorsements. Now, can you do you can do uh, custom uh, loadouts for endorsements per character? Yep. Okay. Yeah, they're just different custom loadouts, and you okay. can mix and match that with the character. And you can see, like, our, our, our uh, dummy. Crash test dummy. Crash test dummy and our troll sniper. So this is Loco Moke Arena. It's uh, much more done. We are going to be adding some large floating stands where the crowd is. So it's one highly requested feature of this map that's not quite in yet. So this is the map that I've seen, and... Uh, yeah, this is the, the one that's kind of been out there the most, it seems mm -hmm. like. Yeah. So this is the Spark. He's got a... A melee weapon as his primary, and a ray gun as a secondary. Nice. His abilities are, the bottom two abilities on all these guys is just an offense and defense. Offense increases your weapon damage and defense increases your health. It seems like that's a, not, a, not the worst place to kind of early levels dump some points. Right. That's another thing that the game has really promoted recently is like, oh, what is your build? Like, what, what skills do you take in which order? Mm -hmm. Then he's got Arc Flash, which is a teleport. Oh he's man, got, you guys must get crazy data. For that stuff of like where is everyone over the course of the match putting their points yeah we have a whole back-end system that we developed to get you know to sort of step mine oh man i bet that stuff is cool that is cool <laughs> data oh just, so think, data. just thinking about like like oh what like in the in the opening like minute like where yeah. is everyone putting like depending on class and uh and you know where they are on the match well once right. you've got people obsessing over ideal character builds you know you're doing something right so he's got this this ability that actually grapples and throws behind you. So most most grapple throws throw the person straight out in front of you. He actually throws it behind, which makes it so you have to play him a little differently. If you're hanging out by the end, you actually want you to be hit between him and the end, not the other way around, or else he'll ring you out. So one of the things that players do with commandos is end up jungling first up top because they can get away so fast from the yeah. bots. And a lot of commandos have easy ways to get up here. Like he can he can teleport. So if I can... I was gonna say it's it seems uh, you know different strategy here to to hang out up here. So you're you're just getting more more uh, dividends out of fighting these these neutral bots. Is that correct? Right, but it's a lot more dangerous. So there's sure. a big trade off. And he's also looking for players around edges so he can jump down and yeah. ring them out. The spark also has this voltage spike sword he has. Uh, when he if you see the electricity on his back after he's charged up with three hits, he can release it. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Good camera angles. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Get this fixed up here. There we go. Okay. Oh. oh, oh, nice recovery. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so then he can do this. And those, if you okay. hit all three of them, they do lots and lots of damage. John, I was a lot more impressive the second time. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was a great texture on that wall, though. It's not real close. <laughs> So he just so got like out said, of there before he died. Yeah. So like I said before, I'm really hurt, so I'm gonna go back go ahead and go back and heal. So another difference between uh, MNC and SMNC, these turrets are uh, already pre-built. So there's no turret building in this okay. in this game mode. Yeah, in this game mode. Yeah, that was that was a, that was a huge part of the last game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's, I was, it I was fit more of the MOBA idea where the, you can kind of measure your progress by how many turrets you've destroyed. Right. But we are going to bring back turret building in other modes. Okay. Let's see if I can ca capture somebody hanging out. Are, uh, are turrets here as big of a deal as they are in the, the more traditional like Dota oh. kind of games? Like, yeah. like, do you really need, you need like most of your team to push a turret and, and right. really take it down? Well, they have well until late too. game. Yeah. And they also have shields, so you can't damage them without the bots. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about your plans for uh, for different modes you're uh, you're hinting at here. 
Well, there's if, one. If you want to. Okay. Yeah, there's one we've been uh, sort of playing around with called Danger Zone. Okay. Which is a... Uh, we, we had a mode called Blitz in the first game, where it was uh, sort of wave after wave of bots, and then you and three other players defend the money ball. Right. So Danger Zone is sort of a hybrid between this mode, which is more competitive uh, PvP, and Blitz. So there's um, pretty much two teams of four or five. We're probably going to go with five. Still messing around with it. And two money balls, and you try to influence what bots are spawned on the other side of the danger zone. John, you're incredibly mobile. Yeah, you're right. Uh, in, this, in this class. Well, that's part of the whole like role of the uh, commando, is to get around very quickly, be able to harass. Or be harassed. Or, or be, be harassed. harassed. Yeah. So the assassin that Uber just is there, he's another commando, so that's why I'm having more issues with him. He's also really good. Yeah, he's. Oh. Still got juice. Oh, oh no! Stunned! Oh, no. Oh. Oh. So Carl is a new character who has a stun. So He's a striker, very similar to... He has, fills the same role as the assault. So he's kind of straight, more straight up shooter. He does have the stun. Um, he's got an ability to jump straight up in the air really high, which then pushes back all pros. Killing dudes getting there's, paid. There's the Annihilator. He's right, getting ready for it. Except I don't have the money yet. The Annihilator takes five seconds to uh, unleash. Yeah, to... which is part of what makes the battle for it so intense. Animation is just like MNC. We're done by our awesome animator, Azo. This uh, is a little contentious here. There you go. Have you guys uh, have you guys had to staff up a lot since the first game, or are you still running with a, a pretty small crew? Right now, we're still running with a very small crew. That's you, you can get a lot more done with the same crew. So we've been working together for a while now, and it just seems like we yeah we second, get stuff done second fast. game. I, I imagine the the processes are, are a little more hammered out at this mm -hmm. point. Well, it looks like they're gonna give me oh no oh! oh god that was so close too. Man. Get back up there. Oh. Jerk robot, now you're dead. Doesn't he know we're trying to run a demo here? <laughs> we want to see the big awesome thing. I was hoping to upgrade my uh, my arc flash so that I can get up back up there faster because the spark can actually teleport straight up to the top of there. Still up? It might be, hasn't yep. been used yet. Yep. Oh, the fight going on. Kick him off. Turnabout's oh. fair play. Oh, 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 no. oh, oh no. Oh, there's like eight dudes oh. up there. They oh, are your friends. Running. Where's your team? I don't know. I think we're going to lose it. Oh, get him off there. Ah. Oh. Oh, too late. Man. I flipped weapons. Ah. Oh. And got killed by it. I was just rude. Oh, I died from falling damage. <laughs> <laughs> by 1%. Ouch. Saddest. You got no bots. It's all right. You spawn more. They're expensive to spawn, but it's nice that the bots that you spawn actually give you money for anything they kill. So I've actually gotten killed by this, or gotten kills from the spawn bots, which is pretty cool. You were on fire there. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Get out of there. Yeah, the spark is very good at, at escaping issues. Even with his awesome holiday sweater on. Don't you mean, don't you mean especially because of especially. his awesome holiday? Yes. The sweater. I'm going to go ahead and spawn some more guys over here. Trying to, trying to recover from them using the Annihilator since we lost all of our bots when they used the Annihilator. So you can see, like, numbers of the other team. I'm under the level a little bit because I see yellow and red numbers. Red means you're two or better. Two levels are... Better higher, or yellow is one level higher. So if I'm seeing a lot of yellow and red, that means I'm kind of under level. Okay, so it's like a quick, quick visual indicator of whether you should engage yeah. or not. Yeah. Ooh, you you probably just... don't want to solo them. Fight that monkey. Oh, oh no. no, man. Oh jeez, oh, I'm in trouble. Luckily, I know how to escape. This time. This time. So say, John, it, seems, it does seem to be a primary skill here. Yeah, that's well, is running away from fights. That's all the combos, <laughs> all the commandos. They're kind of, like I said, they're kind of harassy pros. So he's gone. There you go. Oh. So I, I'm curious, uh, what motivated the uh, you know the 
the decision to to switch the model going from uh, Monday Night Combat to Super Monday Night Combat from you know kind of a you know standalone you know piece of software that you buy to the free to play model? Well, we we like the way we developed. I mean, if you looked at super, uh, regular Monday Night Combat on Steam, it was nice. We really liked continuously updating the game and just keep working on it. Mm -hmm. And that really works well with the free-to-play model. So it okay. kind of was a natural fit for us. And we felt like the, the world MNC kind of fit well for the model, too. Expandable you know, roster and customization and things like that. And it's something we, we talked about for the first MNC, but no one was really ready. Marketplace wasn't really ready yet. Yeah. Free to play I, it's, seems it's, a much more much more viable. Now. Yeah, it's it's only it's only like in the last year that even on our side that like free to play has stopped feeling a little bit like a dirty word, you know, right, like, like right, real yeah. real serious hardcore games. Well, it was such a ghetto are, for so long. Yeah, right. yeah, like it's not all it's not all just Facebook stuff anymore. Like there are like actual real games are coming out that are free uh, in this model. You can have a, a good, meaningful game experience. Yeah, and for us as a small, agile shop, this just works really well for how we, you know, like, like John said, like how we like to develop. We like getting that immediate feedback. Obviously, obviously, being on the PC confers like a zillion benefits right now. But uh, any thought about trying to go back to consoles at some point with this? We would love to. We think that it will do really well on something like XBLA, but. They just gotta catch up. It's gotta catch up. Yeah, they are they they are not ready for it yet. Yeah, they don't, I guess they don't, really don't have the infrastructure to, to support it in the yeah. same way. I think well, I think it still uh, needs it still needs to be proved. Mm -hmm. Like right, yeah. you know, it's like you have that that trickle down of technology uh, from PC to consoles. That's kind of as old as PCs and consoles. Right. And there's some attempts like Crimson Alliance. I think was sort of had. Yeah, sort of. Sort of, sort but sort not of. quite. Yeah. But not. Uh, not in the way that this is like a living, breathing multiplayer community. Right. You know, yeah. this this is changing almost on a daily basis. And the biggest thing for us is we, we have to be able to change it on a daily basis. And one of the other nice things that we've done is we've built this whole back end that we call Ubernet that will allow us to do lots of uh, extra stuff too. So even if we go to console, you know, we want to do a lot of community stuff and clan stuff and all these things that having our own uh, back end gives us. Man, Justice is just on your ass yeah, this entire match. Yeah. Yeah. Justice is a really good assassin. <laughs> and he knows, you know, one of the things about commandos it, is if you can counter the other commandos or snipers and you do a good job of it, that really helps your team a lot. I was going to say, is that kind of a, a common, natural uh, pairing of, of antagonists, the, uh, the commando and the sniper, just because yeah. of their speed? Yeah, the commandos can get around. They can get back behind where the snipers are usually hanging out. Or actually, we call our sniper classes the sharpshooters, the sniper and the uh, gunslinger. Gunslinger. Yeah. Oh, if only I had the money. Start taunting. Oh, this is gonna be trouble. Oh, once again. Uber justice. Never not giving you a hard time. All right. The we funny got... thing is, I know that uh, some of our fans are gonna see this and be like. Oh, you played so bad. Uh, <laughs> Just to I know, I know, I know that people are gonna watch and say, "Oh, yes, the worst questions. What's wrong with you?" <laughs> There's always someone else out there who can do this better. Don't worry. It's the internet. Yep, it's the way it goes. Yep. Ah. Oh. What just happened there? He stunned all three of us oh. with his stun ability, <laughs> and then he tried to get the annihilator himself. But oh, you got it. Oh, uh, we got it. Zap. Whoever our assault is there. But that, that just clears their bots, right? Yeah. Clears right. their bots. You can see at the top of the screen yeah. there. Oh, blue, yeah. Blue just yeah. got erased. You guys are pushing hard. Ooh, let's, yeah, let's get up there. It seems like we would actually have a fight. It uh, it clears all their bots, damages all their pros, and all their fire bases and kitty turrets. Did someone stuff. just throw a keg at you? Yeah, it was a barrel. It was a barrel, yeah. Okay. And was if that... I could pull it off, if you jump over it, we have a little uh, was that cool 8-bit from... sound. That... It was from the, from from the, the gorilla. From the gorilla. All right. God Good. damn it. Good. As it should be. <laughs> God damn you guys. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, stupid or awesome? That's the same well, thing. I mean, they, they're, yeah, they're basically synonymous. I, I think we need a whiskey. I don't differentiate whiskey. anymore. <laughs> I think we need a whiskey media barrel. If, if, yes. I, if I like it, <laughs> then clearly it has to be really stupid. Well, that would be an oak cask. Oak <laughs> cask, yes. But those aren't, whatever, those are just old barrels. Yeah, sure. They fancy it up calling it a cask. There's a little 8-bit 
jump sound if you jump over a barrel. Is there? Mm -hmm. Actually. Yeah. Fan, yeah, there fans yeah, yeah, yeah. ask for it. We put it in. Oh, that's good. Yeah, see, that's another great fans thing about the Fans also ask whole... for cease and desists. <laughs> <laughs> We're so, working on that. Yeah. Next week. So that, that, should, we... that should be a counterpower. You should be able to, like, as another class, just immediate C and D on, uh, on barrels. Oh. Oh! oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Here I am sitting there taunting and he worked his way back up. <laughs> oh, that's what I get. Oh, that was you gotta, you gotta be real careful with the premature taunting. They couldn't, they couldn't have been better. In a game like this. They could not have been better. Uh, did, did I hear you guys say before that taunting has some actual reward if you pull it off? If you taunt after a kill and you finish the taunt within 10 seconds after the kill, you actually get a money bonus for okay, it. Okay, that's cool. If you taunt normal, you get very little amount of money, but if you needed $5 more for Annihilator, you could taunt and get it, too. A little extra cash. Gu guys, I feel like that uh, Annihilator bonus we had earlier. Oh, hold on. Oh, can you still beat up the mascot? Yep. Oh. Kill the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> the announcer does not like him at all. He still does the belly oh. bounce. Now, I don't know if you remember seeing, but we have the Wascot, which is the evil mascot. Right, yes. Right. And he actually has an ability called the Shifty Shuffle that if you... Oh, slipped on a banana. If you, oh, there's uh, that ape again. Yep. If you have the Shifty Shuffle... Where do you think shuffle, the banana came from? Yeah. <laughs> if you have the Shifty Shuffle active, you'll actually counter any pros trying to grapple you, just like the real mascot does. Nice. And his primary weapon, he throws out coins that look like the regular pickup coins, but they explode. And he has Tofu Bacon that damages you. And slows you. Slows you down. So, just to be clear, you named him the Wascot because a W is just an upside down M, right? Exactly. Okay. exactly. okay, I'm glad you're sticking to proper, like, good, good, <laughs> bad conventions. <laughs> you gotta stick with some convention. I'm in trouble. Oh! Uber Justice. So, at this point, Uber Justice is probably your nemesis, right? Yeah. So, that means if John kills him, he gets mucho money. Yeah, that's one of our catch-up mechanics. So if you kill the same person too many times, you start to dominate them. And once you're dominating somebody, you get less money from killing them. And if they kill you, they get more money. And there's also, you get more money if you kill somebody at a higher level than you are. But you also get money if you go on kill streaks too. So it's not like somebody will always catch up to you. It's just trying to re get rid of the idea of uh, if somebody gets ahead of you, you've lost all hope. So it, it's, it's a tough balance, but... The nice, again, another nice thing about the free-to-play, being able to release updates on a constant basis, we can continually make tweaks and changes and stuff. Yeah, I guess I guess nothing about this game is set in stone, right? Nope. And that's one of the, I think one of the draws to these type of games is like, I could play next week and the game will be different and fresh and new and different. And, so just, know. just you know, note the build number in the upper left corner of the screen here, because uh, that's, that's where we're at when we're recording this. So if... If you're watching this video later and it looks extremely different, that's why. Just got a nice uh, flip switch kill there. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta say, it's it's one of the things that uh, I really enjoyed about about Monday Night Combat, and that you can't say about too many, uh, uh, you know, MOBA style games. It's really a pleasure to look at. Like the there's enthusiasm to the to the visual style. I don't know. I, I find most of the most of those styles of games. I don't know, it's just kind of generic to look at. Yeah, they've all, yeah. Everyone's kind of adopted the same, like, non-aesthetic. Well, there's that there's that famous screenshot floating around of, like, all four of those oh, games right, side right, by yeah, side. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. and yeah. it's like, like pick eight, which one. Eight. Tell the difference. So it's sort of the fantasy. Um, right. But there's a mishmash of things in there. Yeah. Yeah. What's the thing is, it's, it's, it's sort of like, well, there's a fantasy setting, but then there's no... There's no consistency to the character designs. Right. Like, this guy is a dwarf, and then this guy is steampunk, yes. and then this guy is a clown. Well, it's, I guess that's what you get when you... It started as, as a mod, right? So the community yeah, came up with all yeah. sorts of yeah. different characters. Yeah. Sure. And the nice thing about our world is we can actually go a little crazy, and it still fits with our fiction. Right, right. It's it's You've, you've set up a framework here that allows for... You know, monkeys and suits and... There's a method to your madness. Uh, We'd like to think so, but, you know... I don't want to alarm you, but we seem to be hanging out around your money ball a lot again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. John's just trying to play consistent, that's all. 
Oh no, there goes our money ball. Uh -oh. down. So one of the one of the big changes we made to the I think I mentioned this before, but I'll just touch on it again. Is uh, once the money ball shields are down, uh, that's when the jackpots actually spawn. The big bots. Okay. Very similar to you know right. the other the, the other mobas that once you lose your barracks or your inhibitor, right, right. You know the the bigger bot starts. That's, the that's bigger the, minions start spawning. When the mega creeps come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also got rid of the idea of overtime in MNC one. You know, there's pretty much 15 minutes, 17 minutes. It, it would go into overtime. And right. Both money balls would drop. And this game at 25 minutes, we spawn jackpots on both teams. Yeah, offset so that it really pushes the game more. So we wanted the game to come to a, nat a natural close rather than a forced one. Whoa, I almost died there. What we noticed with the first game is people would just wait around till overtime and then try to win it there. I think Justice just saved himself. Of course I he had did. Him right out. Of course he did. The assassin has this mega jump that uh, we replaced her uh, her sprint with. We call it Mega Jump, the fans call it the Magic Fart. Yes. <laughs> uh, how big is the is the active community right now? We're it's pretty small. We're at maybe five thousand people right okay. now. So we we started, you know, about thirteen weeks ago with fifty of our biggest fans and then we've been slowly, uh, weekly just been inviting more people. So what uh, what should people do right now if they if they want to play Super Monday Night Combat? So they go down to supermnc.com slash play, or just supermnc.com, and they can sign up. Okay. And we, we've been doing weekly invites, and those invites are going to be going out more frequently. So you yeah, can, we're still in invitational yeah. mode, so you won't get in right away. Okay. But it won't be too long. Okay. Or maybe you will. But you will get maybe. in. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Will, yeah. And there goes the money ball. That's all she wrote, gentlemen. I lost again. Two losses. I know. Uh, uh, well, I'm excited to see more of this game, you guys. This, this is looking real sharp. Uh, it seems like you've made some smart improvements here, and uh, and it it seems like the uh, the shift to the free to play model has been kind of effortless for you guys. Uh, so kudos for that. I'm um, glad it seems that way. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're, well, it, no, seems, we're still, it seems natural. Sure, I think the game fits the model well. Oh, go to uh, show them some replays. Oh stuff yeah. In there. Oh yeah. You know, we we actually didn't uh, other than the, the game itself. If there's anything else in the the periphery that's uh, that's worth talking about. So this God, is, you have a lot of money. Look at that. This this was another nice thing about uh, uh, building our own back end is we have a whole, this whole replay server, so I can go ahead if I wanted to and download a replay. And this is a lot of game code replays, right? So it's it's not just video. Okay, it's super quick. Yeah, and then you could um, you could switch characters, go free cam, just re, you know, speed up, slow down. Very cool. So you can download a game uh, a game and check it out and watch how other people play. And we've actually been talking to some of our veterans and stuff to uh, do kind of mentoring and downloading other people's games and kind of coaching them and that kind of thing to try to help ease that. That know. seems so important. That seems like like the, like the idea of the mentoring program uh, in, in games like this seems just where, where you have to learn so much and there can be sometimes a, a higher barrier to, to entry, especially to, to uh, you know, maybe a more nuanced level of play. And, and in general, just having uh, more of that back-end support, team support, uh, you know, the, not, not just uh, kind of basic quick match stuff. Uh, it, it seems it seems awful critical right now. So this wasn't the game we were just in, um, but this is just a, a random game that I downloaded, and we'll actually be able to just flip through it a little bit. You can slow it down and speed it up and check we're, out other players. Yeah, we're, we're getting rewind in there pretty soon too. Not in there yet. Yeah, so I can I can speed it up. Great! Oh God! Great! I can slow it down. Less great. We can check out. It's still the useful. Pause it. Is there any? Can you like detach the camera and just kind of yep. fly around? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh man, uh, damn! Click on the camera icon there. Yeah. So here's the different <laughs> players. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and then free cam mode. So you could just kind of pull out and watch everything from from above mm -hmm. if uh, if you wanted. Very cool. Uh, I have I have one last question. Uh, before we close here, uh, yeah. so you've mentioned uh, you mentioned actually at the beginning of the video that uh, there's like a rotation of characters. Um, what's the what's like what's the balance? Like how many how many characters are going to be playable for free and uh, like on a, any given week? 
Uh, how often are they going to cycle out? Uh, like, what are the ways that you can open up more characters if, if you want more at the time? Well, we're starting right now with five free characters okay. a, a week, mostly because uh, the game's five on five, so you want to at least be able to fill up a team. Right, and is that um, is that like one character from each kind of role or category? Right. Yeah, they rotate every week. Yeah. Um, we've been talking about some ways to improve the rotation. Uh, we're talking about doing different random characters for different people, too. Yeah, so your your free rotation may be different from somebody else's free rotation. Oh, okay. interesting. So you can have more, more characters in play. Yeah. yeah. And then you can open up characters by playing, with, playing the game with combat credits. So, you know, you play... You know, 10, 15 games, and you'll be able to buy one that you like. Um, and then, as you know, as we get, we have 13 pros right now. As we get more and more, we can consider possibly uh, having more free at a time. But it's more of a function of just how many pros we currently have. Right, right. And like you said, you're still kind of feeling out just what the what the value proposition is like for the the, the premium characters. Right, right. right. And it's great because, you know, again, the whole free-to-play mode, we can change direction at any time. We say, hey, you know, this isn't working or this would be better if we did it this way. And within hours, if we wanted to, we could actually do it, put a, push a change out to everybody. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds pretty awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to give us a look at uh, Super Monday Night Combat. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, folks who want a chance to, to get into the Invitational here before the game launches mm. wide... Uh, supermnc.com slash play go sign up and uh, you guys are, are bringing in new waves of, of players uh, weekly yes fantastic uh, well again uh, Super Monday Night Combat look for it thanks for having us guys yeah thank yeah, you guys thank you